Hello, everybody, and welcome to Cabaret Secrets. My name is Gary Williams, and like everybody in the entertainment business today, I'm sure we're all well aware of the huge opportunities that cruise ships offer. There are dozens of lines employing thousands of singers, dancers, and musicians. Now, if you're an act who's new to ships, or even if you've been around like me for a long time, it can be difficult to understand exactly how to create an act that works and how to make sure that your show stays in demand. Well, in today's show, I'm going to be talking to one of the most respected cruise directors in the business and he tells me a renowned snake charmer who will answer questions that you always wanted to ask but never had the chance. Jerome Sur, welcome to Cabaret Secrets. Thanks Gary. The snake charming thing is well we'll come back to that later. <laughs> Tell us uh, for anybody that's not sure uh, what does a cruise director do? Basically what what we take care of is what we call the flow of a cruise. We make sure that all the guests that come on board have um, have an enjoyable experience and um, what we call the flow of a cruise is that every day we've got a different kind of uh, activities and entertainments that build up to the pinnacle of their cruise which is uh, coming up not right at the end but just before the end of their cruise. That depends on shows, on activities, it depends on the dining experiences and music around the ship. The cruise director basically takes care of all the entertainment on board, but that involves all the youth program, the shows, um, all the broadcasting, the activities, the events, the parties, anything you can imagine, everything that's got to do with fun on board, one way or another, has got to do with me. We're on a big Royal Caribbean ship, the Liberty of the Seas. How many people are in your department? How many people are you responsible for? Uh, 123. That's a lot of people. <laughs> so, and one of those people is me. So, and so, no, with you, that would be 124. <laughs> oh, right, okay. So, but the important thing for us guests is that you're, you're our boss on board. You're yes. not our immediate boss, because our immediate boss would be the production manager, I guess. Yes, he'll be in charge of all, everything that's happening inside the theatre. And you see all of the shows, or just selected? How do I do see? I do try and see every show that comes on board, especially when it comes to uh, guest entertainers that come on board. Uh, all our own production shows, uh, I try and see them at least once a cruise. We do them various uh, amounts of times during the cruise, uh, so that all the guests get the chance to see it. I cannot see all of them, mm -hmm. but all the guest entertainers that come on board, like yourself, I do try and see the shows. Particularly, I guess, if it's a new one that you've not seen yes. before. Yes, I mean, if it's a new one, I will see. It. I mean, I've seen you a couple of times, uh, so I've seen you already, and I know what you the product that you offer, and honestly, it's great. So, what is it that, in your opinion, makes it for a good act? What is it? What are the elements of a you know when you see a show that really works? What is it that's making it work for you? Um, well, especially, I'm kind of a European cruise director for Royal Caribbean. I'm the guy who takes care of the big ships when it comes to Europe. Uh, due to my experience, past experience working with different demographics, different um, languages especially. And uh, for example, when you come on and in your particular act and you've got amazing music that everyone knows and it, and it appeals to every different nationality, every different demographics. Uh, you're great at what you do, you've got the great voice, but then you actually um, mold your show depending on who's on board. Uh, if we've got Italian guests, Spanish guests, you will greet them in their own language, you'll talk to them, you'll sing a song or two in their language as well. Um, in this specific run that we have, which we have up to 72 different nationalities, the guest entertainers that come on board, I do uh, like it and really appreciate it when they make an effort to appeal to every different nationality, especially the main ones that we have on board. Which are usually Spanish? Spanish, English, Italian, Norwegian, and lately the uh, countries from the Middle East. And a lot of Americans too, so same yeah. language, but it's uh, a, a, a different kind of audience. It is. I mean, the Americans are the different to the Brits. The Brits are very much, no offense to any Brits, but sit down and entertain me. Yes. And the Americans are very much, uh, let's have fun. Yes. Yeah, party I'm glad people. I'm, not, I'm, I'm glad I'm not the only one to have thought that, yeah. It is very different, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. And uh, But when I looked at a show, we're, uh, we're never going to please everyone. Mm. You're not going to please everyone. There's some people that might not like you because um, they not they don't like that kind of music or they don't like um, you personally for some strange and obscure reason or they don't like... 
Um, they might just not like that kind of show, exactly. like a one-man show. So they might just like production shows, or they might prefer big bands. They might prefer something with uh, a, 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 not an orchestra because you use an orchestra, but something like a tribute band, mm. which is uh, songs from their area. Mm. Not mm. so uh, you can't please everyone, but uh... and do you think that's that's part of the because that is the challenge I think in doing a ship that that the, the, there is such a wide variety of people from different ages and different backgrounds and different musical tastes it's really hard the challenge is to try and do i think a little bit of something for everybody and try and keep it as much of a a middling sort of ground i mean you know if people are really into jazz say that the, the coming to my shows and they're not going to go wow that was the best thing i've ever seen because they're going to be a little bit of that but not much right exactly. that's why on a big ship i know you're going to be working on the allure the, the reason those ships work so successfully is that there is a jazz club, there's a comedy club, there's a, a Latin club, isn't there? There is So people that want very specific things can get it on the ship as well. But in the shows that we do as guest entertainers, we have to really try and appeal to as many people at the same time. Yeah, you do appeal as, uh, as many people at the same time, but also you're part of a whole entertainment of a ship. For example, I have a jazz set every week on the ship. Um, with uh, with my jazz quintet, it's not the four orchestra that I have. I just use five of them. I have a Latin uh, band on board. I have a, a calypso duo on board. I have a well a nine piece band which you know very well. I've got a rock and roll band on board. So in all different venues, we've got different kind of music, and then you come as parts as a whole entertainment. You come as a extra piece in a puzzle yeah. kind of thing. So um, like we have you at the beginning of a cruise um, we had a juggler that came on board um, late uh, next cruise I've got a violinist coming on and then I've got uh, uh, Tracy Shields who does um, a Celine Dion act so we always try and appeal to everyone and out in the ship the bigger the ship the more toys you have to play with mm. the more m venues you have so m the more you can appeal to everyone you speak, is it four languages? Seven. Seven languages. Yeah, I think you've learned another one since I last saw you. And you're very good at getting all the languages out, but doing it quickly enough that people don't get bored. For me, it's a second nature. And what I like to do, what I like to do is, on this ship right now, I'm only doing two or three languages at a time. Uh, but when I was working in hotels before, I'd have to maybe do it in five languages at a time. So you have to keep an order of the languages you're going to talk in. Like, at first I'll start in Spanish because we're in Spain at the time. So I'll start in Spanish. Then I go to English because it's international. Then I go to French because it's my own. Then I'll do Italian and then German because it's very different to what I was speaking before. But I do one sentence in each. Mm. And if you keep the order, it'll be fine. And if you keep the order, guess actually see and understand when their turn is to actually mm. listen to because you keep in the same order. Do you think it's necessary for guest acts to be able to speak in a in a you know a, a, at least one or two other languages? The way the world is nowadays that we've got well, and cruising on any any place. I mean, it's just so easy to hop on a plane and go anywhere. It's so easy to have guests from different nationalities in one place that it 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 always helps. It really does. It cannot it, it cannot be a bad thing to know languages. Mm at all especially when you work on a cruise industry and cruise industry now especially with Royal Caribbean they they're really going international we're going to we've got ships in Asia we've got ships in South America we've got ships in the US ships that go to Australia ships in Europe we just need to learn a few lines don't we just to, I think it's just to acknowledge that you know different people from different languages from different nations you're exactly right you have to acknowledge them I mean I don't speak every language under the sun but when I do my welcome aboard kind of thing I uh, work I welcome as many nationalities as I can. I can't speak Portuguese, but I welcome them in Portuguese. I can't speak Norwegian, but I welcome them in Norwegian. So, and I can speak the other languages. So, but you acknowledge them, and as long as they acknowledge, they feel part of it. Mm -hmm. And it's the whole point in a show is to make sure that people, or your guests, or your, your audience, feels part of a show. I, you need to have them literally in the palm of your hand. Yeah, exactly, because everything that we do is about making a connection with the yeah. audience. And e I mean, every word that we say. So the more that we can make that connection by the songs that we say, or by making them laugh, or taking them back to a certain time in their lives, a memory, or just whatever, connecting to their country, saying that we like a particular food that's famous in their country, makes them feel noticed and acknowledged, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. I mean, when you do your show, you talk about your past, you talk about uh, what you've done, but the way you do it, you relate to them because at some point in time, someone's lived through something similar as well. Mm -hmm. And then you talk, you greet in, you, you greet in Japanese, you greet in Chinese, you greet in all these different languages. 
And they appreciate it. The guests really do appreciate it. I know lots of great acts, good singers, that used to be busy and are now struggling for work. And I think it's because they've not adapted. I think it's because they've been doing the same show for years. They haven't learned any languages. They haven't acknowledged that the industry is more international now. I agree. And what the industry seems to be going for, apart from just having one singer, it's also going for tribute acts, it's going for visual acts, it's going for acts that actually don't talk too much if they don't know the language. It's just basically coming up to re doing the songs that guests can relate to, that uh, songs that are known internationally. I mean, you can name bands, you can name... Frank Sinatra, you can name the Beatles, you can name Michael Jackson, you can name mm. Celine Dion, you can name all these artists that are famous worldwide, which um, every nationality like the music, ABBA, for example, etc. All these songs, all these artists, then a lot of the acts that we've had in the past when um, the cruise industry was mostly for the Saxon-speaking people, the English-speaking people, are great, they're great acts, but the industry's changing. Um, everyone has to evolve at some point in time. And it's finding those songs that have that huge international appeal when you see an act that just doesn't really work well can you are you able to identify what it is that you know common mistakes that acts make I mean, is there anything specific or is it just uh, just didn't really work uh, both sometimes that act can work really well on land or in a different venue but it just won't work because of the demographics of the nationalities that we have sometimes the act is an absolutely great act but it's not cut out for uh, Royal Caribbean for the quality, for the standard that we have. It doesn't mean it's a bad act. It just doesn't mean it's not, not for a good us. fit. Yeah. I would say is really work on a show. You really not just have a couple of songs, come on and do them. It's not like working in a pub. It's not like working uh, in, uh, in a local theatre. It's very demanding. You, you, you've got the chance to work with an amazing nine-piece orchestra. They can just give them the music that day and they'll do the show for you. You've got the chance to work with amazing technicians, an amazing theatre, light, sound. I think uh, people don't appreciate, if they've, unless they've been on a ship, they don't appreciate how spectacular the theatres are, especially on a ship like this on the Allure where mm -hmm. you're going next. I mean, they, they, they really are state, they're to rival anything on land, aren't they? We've got the chance on ships. I actually prefer the, the theatres that we have on ships than we have on land. Mm. Many theatres on land are old. Mm. We don't build that many new theatres nowadays. So we've got a new theatre being built on a regular basis because we've got new ships coming out. Mm. The theatres that we have, apart from the latest technology, apart from since it's made out of metal, we don't have pillars in the middle. Mm. You know, we can have a really big open area. What's the uh, seating capacity on Liberty where we are now? 1,364. And a law, an oasis? Uh, yeah, not much more, believe it or not. Mm. It's about not 14 and a half, yeah, I think. Yeah, not much yeah. more. Yeah. I don't know the exact figures, I still haven't been on the ship, but not much more. When uh, act when we've done our shows, we I think the, the guests do ratings, right? I mean, there's some kind of rating system. Yes, there is. Um, the guests, uh, when they go back home, they receive an email from Royal Caribbean, and it's a survey. And in the survey, there's, uh, there's little questions, and uh, it's they've got the chance to write the comments, but also they've got, it's a bit like multiple choice, like, uh, are you good, bad, excellent, etc. But you also have a place where you can place your comments. And there's bits for entertainment. It's a lot. It's food. It's, Are uh, the entertainers specified by name? Guest entertainers, not specified by the actual name. But, I mean, the, the question is, d d does anybody read these things? I mean, does how much difference does it make if, if guests think an act is wonderful or terrible? It helps a lot because... Um, I, as I said before, I try to watch a show, so you can tell by the amount of people who leave, you can tell by the reaction of a guest, if a show went down well or not, these are the guests, because I could say this show was bad, but that's my personal opinion. Mm. I use my professional expertise, but I might not like someone, but the rest of uh, the audience absolutely adore them. So you fill out your own report. As cruise director, you send your own report off to head office. I send my own report, but that's why I watch the shows, because I don't only base it on what I think, I base it on also uh, what the guests think, because I'm always at the end of a show, I'm at the doors, uh, de-greeting the guests, and they all say, oh, great show, oh, thanks, oh, blah, blah, blah. Like you there as well, at the end of a show, and a lot of guests come and see you. And... Um, so do you think that's important? Do you think that's important for an act to, to to stand outside the doors, whether you're selling CDs or not, to stand outside the doors and, as you call it, degree? Do you think you would advise any act to do that? Come off stage, run around to the front, and see them as they leave. I love it. That's what I've got to Why? say. Why? I I love it because it makes the show more personable. Guests 
absolutely adore to meet stars. People in general. And I'm always at the doors of a theatre. I love it at the end of a show when uh, some of our guest entertainers come and stand at the doors, whether they're selling CDs or not, because guests can come up to them and meet in person, have a picture taken, mm. go back home, say, look, I've got a picture. This guy was amazing. It's a lot of word of mouth. Mm. It adds to their experience. It, it's amazing. I mean, for example, uh, we've got an amazing show on board, Saturday Night Fever, uh, straight from Broadway and West End. And we make sure that our guest entertainers, which are in that, our actors, singers and all, they have sessions of meeting the stars, which work fantastically with our guests because they love to meet our stars. Yeah. Is it important, because we are on a cruise ship, it's not on land, is it important for us entertainers to act in a certain way, to be visible around the ship, even you know when it's not our show day? Uh, no, because guests won't actually recognise you. They might recognise you after you've done your show. Before you've done your show, you might not. But a lot of our guest entertainers come on board uh, the day before or the day that they're going to act, and they leave a following day or two days later. That's quite common with Royal, isn't it? Because yeah. most of the lines are not like that. Most of the lines certainly in my experience we're on usually for a week we'll go on you know three days in we'll do the show and we'll get off you know three days after but with royal it's more what i would call fly-ons we come in do the show and get off again but there's no pressure you think for guest entertainers to uh, you know be uh, seating sitting with guests in the dining room joining them on sort of open tables or you know schmoozing trying to just you know sitting around chatting to guests at bars if they feel like it, it's okay, but you don't, you wouldn't think anything bad if they just sort of disappeared in their cabin after their show. I wouldn't, because every every entertainer is different. Mm. Um, every entertainer have their own uh, way of doing things, and um, they come. They, we contract them to do a show, and they leave. Now, I love it when I see a guest entertainer roaming around the ship, being in a bar, talking to a guest. Mm. Guests adore it. Um, if any entertainer would come up to me and ask me. Should I do that? I'd be like, yeah, by all means, go. I mean, you come on board, they've got a discount card so they can get uh, drinks cheaper as well than regular prices, etc. And we do that, for, um, encourage them to go out and have some fun as well with our guests. But it's not something I want to impose on because some, some entertainers have different ways of working. How much influence do you have when you do your reports on whether an act will get rebooked or not? A lot. And so... Is it important, do you think, or is it in the act's interest to when they get on the ship to try and find, particularly it's the first time, find the cruiser, say hi, introduce themselves, schmooze you a little bit? Not schmooze me, no. Um, yeah, to me, to say hi, I'm here, uh, this is what I'm going to do. Is uh, I mean, when I meet the acts, I'm always like, what can I do for you? How would you like to be introduced? How is your show? You know, to make their life easy as well. So you would like it, because I know, you, you obviously, you've, you're very, very busy, and... You know, personally, I don't normally... It was like when, when we met, and that's the way I normally meet cruiser is, is backstage just before the show, mm -hmm. because I think, I, I worry that if I, you know, call you up sometime, that, that you're going to be in the middle of something, oh, God, there's this guest entertainer that's bothering me. But actually... Really, you you it's it's all right. How do you you know? Would you would that would that bother you if the you know mid afternoon one day that they, they gave you a ring or knocked on your door? Would you do you prefer it just backstage and say hi, how you doing, and a quick hello? Uh, your point of, the point of contact for any guest entertainer on board is a stage and production manager, mm. who if there's any queries, any problems, you should relay with the stage and production manager. Who if he needs me, if he can't do something by himself, he'll contact me because I'm his supervisor. Yeah. But by all means, I absolutely. I absolutely adore when, uh, when anyone who's just come on board comes and says hi. For example, my team, my permanent team here on board, when they just sign on, they've come from vacation, or there's someone new who comes on board, I ask the supervisor after the drill, which is the first day that we have on board, they come, bring them to my office for me to meet them, to mm. see how was the trip, mm. and is there anything that you need, uh, how, 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 are you jet lagged, uh, mm. are you okay? So um, good to know. It's good to know, yeah. you know, because we don't know these things unless I'd love, we ask. I'd love to have a guest, uh, guest entertainers come and say hi. I love to. Hi, I'm here. This is what I'm going to do. Not any Brilliant. questions, any like detail. Yeah. That should go to the production manager. Any you know yes. details, but you don't want to be bothered by that. If it becomes a problem, the production manager will tell you. But you just it's, you like it if we just say say hi. hi. We're here. Nice to see you. Great. Have a nice <laughs> cruise. Yeah, that's all you need, just to say hi, acknowledge, and, yeah. and to know each other. That's it, but first point of contact, stage and production manager. We are artists, we always think that it's all about us because we've got these enormous egos, and I've learned over the years that, of course, what we do is, as you said at the beginning of this interview, we're a, it's a very small part of a, a, a massive 
range of entertainment that's on offer to the guests. And sometimes on some short cruises, the, the cruise directors really need to get as much face time as possible with the guests. So sometimes I know it's important for some, some cruise directors to, to introduce the shows. I mean, do you have any preference on, you know, cold starts or where you introduce or not? It, it, it's, you know, does it get on your nerves if there's too many cold starts? It depends on the cruise and it depends on how the cold start is. I mean, I've seen some great cold starts. I've seen some horrible cold starts. Uh, personally, I prefer to be on stage, mm. uh, especially on short cruises, like you said, because you need, uh, as the cruise director is the face of a company mm. for the ship. Mm. He's a go-to guy mm. or girl. He, it's, a, it's a person that's on your TV. He's your friend. He's, everyone knows the cruise director on board. So, he's, and he's in charge of all the entertainment, which is the center of it being the mm -hmm. theater. Um, now, some cold starts are great. Some shows will not work if the cruise director comes on introducing the show, and then it, the whole, it's like having two introductions because there's an introduction already made. So, it depends how the introduction is. Sometimes uh, I've seen an introduction and I've said, no, I'll come on, but I will make my introduction different to not make it like two introductions. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll crack a joke, i say, ladies and gentlemen, are you ready for showtime? Yes, yeah, so we get ready for this, and I'll just get off. I won't introduce the act, because the act has been introduced by the cold start. Yes. But I'll still get my stage time if I need to. Mm -hmm. Now, that's on a three, four-day cruise, like we used to do on the Majesty of Seas when I was there. Now, like, on a seven-day cruise here, already with our production shows are cold starts due to the nature of a production show. So uh, when we have a guest entertainer, I try to go on. But we've, I've got an amazing tour on board, which is the TV. Mm -hmm. Every guest wakes up in the morning with me in the state room. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I can use the stage depending on the gold start. If it's a good one, I'll go Go ahead. If, uh, if I can see myself going in it and not introducing the show but actually making some kind of face time, I will. But that's why I'm always... So many cold starts on this ship. I'm always at the doors of the theatre greeting the guests when they come in, so yeah. I still get some time. And it's important, I suppose, then, for acts when they're put, constructing their show to try and build in some flexibility so that, you know, if, if it's a short cruise and if you say, look, I really, you know, want to get introduced this show, it's better, isn't it? For, you're going to be happier if, if you can introduce a thing and if the, act, if the introduction is designed to have some kind of flexibility so it can be introduced or not, that's going to be better all round. Uh, at the end of the day, if a cruise director wants to introduce a show, he will. Yeah. yeah. Uh, at the end of the day, it's his ship, it's his theatre. Yeah. He will. So... Um, a relationship with a cruise director is important when you become a guest entertainer. It is very important. And you are, uh, if you're good, you are going to work with them again. So it's always good to keep uh, good contacts. And you, on different ships, you will bump bump with each other again. It's a small world, isn't yeah, it? We it keep is. seeing the same people all over the place. <laughs> yeah. It is. And it's good because you end up by having a network of friends all around the world. Yeah, so it's it absolutely is, yeah. fantastic. Uh, before we go, tell me about the snake charming. Ever since I was four or five years old, I've been around snakes. Until one day, I just decided to take a break from hotels. So I quit everything, and I just just worked with snakes for a long, long time. And, yeah, snake charmer. Oh, you should have seen me when I was in Morocco. I took, I took my mum to Morocco. She was really scared because I just get up to a cobra like that. And it's, it's funny. But I got the photos to prove it. I do have the photos to prove it and the videos to prove it of me on stage with snakes. Jerome, sir, thank you so much for talking to us today. Thanks, Gary. Thank you for listening to this Cabaret Secrets podcast. If you've got any comments or questions, please visit cabaretsecrets.com where you'll also find details of the Cabaret Secrets book, an indispensable guide on how to create your own show, travel the world, and get paid to do what you love.